Okay, I'm out here with the Case Ingersoll, this one's Ingersoll, 448 high drive tractor. Uh, this one needs a new starter. It's been trouble since I've got it. And I've just been oiling it up, trying to get in there through the crack and oil the front bearing and try to keep it keep it turning for me, but it's just it's just stupid. It just won't. So the thing I gotta figure out, because I'm not really familiar, this has the Onan B48M engine in it. And I'm not really familiar with the Onan. Uh, it just looks like a pain in the ass to work on, is what it does. And so I'm just going to start with, I can see the starter down here, and I can see the battery cable, but the bolts are of course obscured by everything, so I don't know if I'm going to have to take off all this front stuff, this cover, I'm going to first start taking off the easy stuff, what I can see, but I may may very well have to take off all the all the covers up here and I don't know if the muffler has to come off I have, I have no idea so we're in it together I'm just gonna go for the easy stuff first alright start with the 3 8 inch and see what happens and just one screw holding that Okay. Here's a gasket that goes around your oil filter. I think they put that on there just to keep the airflow going proper. And no, this one is tied in way back there too. Okay, got that one out. This one's being held. You got to take this one off first, then get at that one. This is the problem if you've never worked on this exact type before. You kind of learn as you go and just take off stuff until suddenly you're there. Alright, I see one way back straight in. What size? It might be 3 eighths, but that wall is too thick on that socket. Go down to quarter inch drive, see if that gets me there. Yep, quarter inch drive, 3 eighths. good. If I can get this spark plug boot off without ruining it. A whole bunch of stuff in my way here. There we go. Alright, now maybe I can get it. Yeah, now I can get this bolt here. Just for this. And being that we're into an aluminum head, I'm surprised these are coming out so nicely. Um, actually, before I got it, this this was a really, really premium machine inside only. You know, all, always stored indoors kind of kind of machine. That really helps with the corrosion. clog here so that's good to get that out of there because that airflow really needs to get through those fins all right now I can see the starter I don't know if it's bolted through the face actually let me get the new starter that'll tell me 
Okay, so here's what I'm looking at on the starter. I just bought a cheap aftermarket one. I figure it's probably better than what I got. What I suspect, suspect is wrong on the one I've got is this bushing is like rusted out or something or just seized on there. Because every time I oil it, it seems to work fine for a little bit and then stops again. But uh, here's here's the nut we can see. that That's the power going in. That's the nut. So this is about how it sits on there. But here's what I got. Looks like one bolt hole is in a fixed position and the other one is semi-adjustable or maybe this universal the starter is more universal and fits more machines but anyway looks like two bolts on the inner engine side so it looks like it'll be a beast to get to okay I'm up here on the front grill of the tractor I'm gonna take the hood off because I can just see it's gonna fight me the whole day um, looks like there's just a cotter key here and then you could pull that hinge pin and pull that whole hood right off of there. So I'm going to do that. I've already unplugged the headlights. Now it looks to me like that hinge pin needs to be just driven over. How you would I guess I'll let's just try it and see what happens here. Oh, it's not seized up. And if I can grab it on the other end, pull it out. she is. Poke a hole in it. Okay, so up here what we got is the uh, hydraulic cooling fan. What I think I have to get off I hope we don't have to disturb all that, but what I think I have to get off is this side plate. And this side plate I can see is bolted down with two pretty good sized bolts there. Maybe I'll take it loose here and there, see if that comes out of the way. I just got to keep excavating things because I think we have to take this front cover out and it's not going to come out with everything in the way. are always over on the other side. Or they're the wrong one. Okay, and where'd that little washer go? There it is. Okay, so this actually comes out of the way fairly easy. I kind of wasn't expecting it to have the uh, good flex lines right there, so it's not so bad. We'll just try to be gentle with it so we don't cause a hole. Now I can try to get this side out. Actually, I think I'm going to have to take all this off because how am I going to get that whole shroud to move forward? Yeah. This is going to be a job for a stupid starter. Alright, I'm going to do both of the up top ones next. Just keep taking stuff apart here until, until we look like we're getting...
Those ones don't have nuts. Okay, heat shield comes off easy enough. It just seems like everything you want to take off, like I would like to get these bolts, but no, they got the heat shield over them. It's like, come on, think about it, guys. I mean, you can take it off easy enough. It's here and then there, but you just have to take apart half the engine to get at anything on this thing. All right, back on the other side of the engine. Let's go ahead. Keep excavating. Wrong socket. Yeah, that's one of those ones into that, into the aluminum I'm worried about. The other ones I've been lucky on, but I know my luck's going to run out one of these minutes. I think it came. Let's do it with the impact. Yeah. But how do the threads look? Eh, mediocre. Another one here. And of course that one is three eighths, right? Yeah. Which I don't have in my hand. <coughs> we got it, half inch. Sometimes you just never believe they're really going to come loose, but they do. I'm going to just leave the hardware on there. I think it'll slip off easy enough. I don't, can't imagine they would have clamped that that hard, but maybe they did. doesn't look like it was leaking, so maybe it's clamped pretty good. Let's see if we can get this side off first. Ugh. Yeah, you don't want to start messing with an old muffler like that. Do I try to take it off at the engine? That sounds even riskier. Let me look it over and make sure that has to come off. Here's what I'm wondering. If I get all these bolts to come out, if they do, down here, will that come out around that muffler and not have to disturb the muffler? That would be preferable. I'm going to take these loose and see what that buys me. Potentially good news. Okay, I got all these bolts out. These are just clipped onto this. This may not have to move at all. So let me see if I knock those out. They've been on there a few years. I know they aren't just clipped on. It's rolled over there. Okay, back up to the top. One more bolt up here and I think I can slip that whole piece down and around the back of that muffler. Folks, this is getting ridiculous. So I take the bolt out, try to pull it. Oh yeah, it comes with the whole coil and the whole everything, and then this has got to come off to get that to slide out. Yeah, more, more disassembly. And I'm at the point now where I'm realizing that the whole clutch assembly is going to have to come off because this cannot come off without the screen coming off. And the screen can come off without all this coming off. So, more disassembly to come. I'm going to start by this little uh, the actuator for the clutch. 
bend in the little tabs. This will be a better tool. Why wouldn't that come up? There it goes. A little sticky. I'll get that when the time comes. Let me get this big nut here. Unusually big one. What size are you? Are you a three quarter? You are three quarter. Is it a reverse thread? I didn't strip it to death, so it must not be. Oh, somebody's going to have to remember how all this goes back. Oh dear. I assume this is an adjustment, which I should probably measure that distance right now because there's a certain amount of adjustment you'll need to make that clutch engage. And I don't know if there'll be marks left. A lot of times you can see like a dirt line or something. I'll just measure that out. All right, almost got it off. Good. Oh, I didn't even have to take that pin off. I could have just rolled it out of my way. Didn't know that at the time. Wow. You get even one of those washers out of the, out of the out of place and I'll bet you all hell would break loose. this one, what I'm going to do now is down here, there's a, uh, this is how you tension your belt. I'm going to release the tension off that belt. To make it easy for myself. out of my face. See where you guys are pointing. There we go. See if this comes off. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that still comes off. Look at all these washers, wave washers, and holy macaroni. Here's your clutch lining material. Looks like I got a good amount left on this one. Okay. Looks like uh, a pre-stripped number three Phillips times three and a couple of hex bolts are holding that on. I'm going to start with the Phillips. That one's already stripped. That one looks decent. Well, I'm amazed sometimes, and the one that's not stripped yet isn't coming off.
Yep. Two out of three. No. I'm going to try a little heat and beat. Just give it a little heat with the torch. Any torch, propane, map, whatever you got. There it goes. Lucky day. Oh, that's a little warm. All right, now I'm going to see what size Allen that is. Is it three sixteenths? It is three sixteenths. See if I got a hex impact to fit that. Might be the best route. Hex impact attempt one. No. Yo! Woo! Hot, hot! Still hot. No chance on this one either. I'm going to heat those up, try the same trick. Give yeah, these a little heat. Got the first one out easy. With heat. And there's a bunch of crusty brown stuff behind there. It may be some sort of Loctite. I'm not sure. Could be corrosion. Don't know. Don't care. Got it out. Now I'm going to let everything cool down for a minute. Okay, I gave that a few taps with the hammer. And it decided to basically come off. Fall off. Which was good. So now, I've got to figure out what else is holding that cage on. This feels like something over here. Can't quite see it. Don't know. Well, there's several things. There's a throttle cable. There's a lot of things. I'm hoping I can just pull this thing out of the way enough to get at those bolts. Maybe we don't have to mess with all that. But what is holding so hard at the bottom? Something is down there. Okay, I think I figured it out. There's one more way at the bottom. One more bolt, must be a 3 8 inch, it's pretty small. Uh, let me get this tool set up. And there it is. And I just dropped it. Found it. Now let's see. Oh, now we maybe, we maybe got something going here. probably will have to take that off which means taking off the throttle cable and taking off at least the wires for the coil that are here 
Okay, for the throttle, uh, I had to take the cable out of that one. And then this one, there's a bolt down at the bottom. I took the whole bolt out, so now that's free from the piece we need to remove. The other thing I gotta do, this rubber grommet comes out with the piece we want. And then on the other side now, I'm gonna just take off the wires because that's probably gonna be the easiest and uh, pull the spark wires too. Okay, got the coils undone, got the um, yeah, the ignition coil, the spark wires. Now let's see if I can sneak this out. Or if that muffler is really going to hold this up or what. Does that get it out far enough where I can see the starter bolts? Almost. But not really. Okay, nothing was working. Had to take the exhaust manifolds off at the engine. Luckily, all bolts came out with no snapping. Now, maybe I could get this cover off. And it still won't. Oh, yeah, yeah. There. Now I'm where I would have liked to have been about an hour or two ago. Now I can see one starter bolt there and one starter bolt up there. So I should be able to pretty much get at them. You don't have a straight on shot. Here's your straight on shot. Um, so I'll have to get it with a regular wrench. And the other one is a little easier to get to, but this one's a little bit obstructed. I might have to take out this engine bolt to get at that one proper engine mount bolt, but we'll see how it goes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm all the way to the point that I'm going to pull the flywheel so I can get on those bolts. They are almost impossible to get at otherwise. Wow, flywheel's off. All right, now for the very first time, I can see the two bolts. And of course they're a different size. And that one doesn't want to give up easy. Get a little bit of an extension. Wow. There it goes. Wow, that only took several hours. And so I'm looking, I guess this one would be the pivot and this one would be the one where you clock it in and out. It's dead in the center. So I'm gonna put the new one dead in the center of its travel. And I'm gonna give the starter manufacturer the benefit of doubt on this one. These bolts were different size, although they looked like the same brand. It's possible somebody could have stripped one out and drilled the old starter bigger, but it ain't going to fit. Got to drill the brand new starter. Unbelievable. Here, yet again, got the hole drilled larger for the larger size bolt.
Okay, I drilled out the hole for the larger size bolt, put that on the bottom. Other one's on the top. This one, we know, is going to be put about in the center of its travel, which will be right exactly there. Lock the pivot bolt down. That's all this job should have really taken. But instead, I got like three hours into it probably already. And this is what you call a while you're at it. So while I was at it, I was looking in there and then I could just see the fins have a nice even coat of dust just enough stuff to stop 100% of the airflow going through these fins and that will cause an overheated engine and uh, probably a head gasket failure wasn't far behind so I'll get that all get that all this stuff get all this out okay now much much later in the day got everything put back clutch is all ready um, actually, I'm just going to tension up that, tension up that pulley. Um, I think backwards is more tension. No, I think I was doing it right. Bring it back. Brought you back counterclockwise is tensioning it. So I'll go, I'll try it about there. Um, got the coil put back, plugs are on, booster is boosting. All right, let's see if it'll work. Uh, probably choke it. I might have to adjust the throttle a little bit because I took the linkage off. No joke. starter works much better than the last okay that's an, that's it for the starter uh, if you like this video please subscribe I still have to put the hood on uh, please subscribe please share it with others and why don't you hit the like button there and also uh, if you want notifications of new videos that come out when they come out you can hit the bell down below thanks for watching